Yeah. Well, my next guest is Francesco Sauer, and Francesco lives in a similar world to me. He works in the part of the planet where a lot of people have no knowledge of or completely overlooked. He works underground. And I feel that we have a lot in common because I work at sea and a lot of people look at the sea as the same way as they do caves. Francesco, welcome, sir. How are you? Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, of course, we, I will be speaking about caves, so the underworld, which is really the other frontier after oceans and, and the sea that we still have to explore here on Earth, and we have really to, to learn a lot about this. So if you want, I can start sharing my, my screen. Yes, please, uh, Francesco, have fun. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. So, yes, the title of my speech is The Dark Continent. Uh, because caves are really one of the new frontiers of scientific exploration on our planet. So we have started to explore caves recently because uh, as a human being, uh, only in the last 40, 50 years, we have really started to go underground as cavers, as paleologists, and to explore these, uh, these territories that lie below our, our feet. And we know now, now that there is really a lot to learn. And, uh, and because most of these caves are unexplored, there is also a lot to protect and uh, to preserve for the future of humanity. So um, what we know and how we know about caves, because uh, while uh, the, su the surface of the earth can be mapped through satellites, but also, <clears throat> for example, part of the ocean can be, can be studied even, even from not necessarily going underwater, when we talk about caves, really, uh, we have no other means than going there and exploring them. And uh, a cave is a cavity that usually open toward the surface and that can be filled by air or water. So we have uh, caves that where we can go uh, just uh, descending shafts or, or just uh, walking through galleries and tunnels. But of course, we have also caves that are uh, underwater caves, so we need to dive. And uh, what is interesting that there are, of course, no scientific means or technologies to really know and map caves from, from the surface. So all what we know is derived from direct geographical exploration and mapping of this environment by speleologists. So it, it's really a, a new frontier and it's only our physical direct exploration that will allow to learn about it. And another very important thing to keep in mind is that uh, uh, only those caves that have an axis on the surface can be explored. And these caves are a minimum number of the wall because the most of caves probably lies just below our, our feet but has no any entrance that allow human to access them. So, so it's really a dark continent that uh, will never be explored completely. It, it, it's, it is really impossible to, to know everything about what lies below the surface. So what we know so far, uh, of course, uh, we have uh, the classical karst caves, which are caves which are formed in uh, soluble rocks. And, uh, and it's just water which is entering into fractures and, and, and opening these, these cavities through the solution of these rocks, like limestone, gypsum, dolostones. And, and these are the, the, the most of the caves explored in the world. We are used to see these kind of landscapes, gigantic shafts, underground rivers, uh, galleries, tunnels, phreatic, phreatic conduits, and so on. And they usually develop in mountain areas, and, um, and sometimes they, they go even below the water table, so they are under, underwater. They can form uh, three-dimensional networks, very uh, deep vertical passages, and they are usually connected to the surface. Here are some examples. Among the classical cast caves, we have lo the longest caves in the world. Uh, they can reach hundreds of kilometers, like um, Mammoth Cave in Kentucky, uh, but also other caves, like, for example, in the Yucatan Peninsula now, uh, there are really some gigantic systems explored by divers. And, and these are really labyrinths that can, can reach uh, impressive uh, uh, lengths. But also caves go uh, down below the surface and especially mountain area, they can really reach very important depths. Uh, these are uh, two examples of the two deepest caves in the world, which are in Caucasus region in Abkhazia, explored by Russian cavers and they reach uh, over 2000 meters uh, below the surface. And uh, we know more than 100 uh, caves now reaching more than 1000 meters below the surface. 
and for sure there are much much more but of course it's very difficult for human for speleologists to go there and explore this kind of case because they require uh, expedition that can last for uh, for even weeks so it's really a, a frontier of exploration but this, it is important to know that um, also uh, caves contain some of the biggest actually the biggest underground environment on, on our planet human being has, has never been able to, to replicate what uh, can be found in a cave like gigantic chambers uh, some of the biggest rooms that can reach for example in china more than 10 millions of cubic meters just to give to you an idea the the san peter cathedral in rome is just uh, it's just uh, 600,000 me cubic meters. So several uh, St. Peter Catrida could, could, could stay, could fit in, in one of these rooms, uh, like Sharawak Chamber, for example, in Bonn, or even here in Europe, in uh, Laverna Chamber in the Pyrenees. So we have really a fantastic world down there. And uh, not all of this is just uh, uh, carved by water uh, infiltrating through 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 the, the, the fractures on the surface through through the rocks but sometimes we have different processes for example we have uh, hypogenic caves hypogenic caves formed due to rising waters from the earth interior so from below and these are some of the most fantastic caves like lechuguilla uh, in uh, in um, in new mexico and, uh, and these caves, because they are not uh, really connected to the surface, they host the incredible uh, mineral formation and life. And one of the most spectacular caves that I've been able to, to explore with the La Venta Association, uh, an Italian association that has been uh, exploring a lot in Mexico, was the Nike Crystal Cave. This cave is just an example that uh, uh, incredible cavities can exist below the surface, hosting, in this case, gigantic crystals but uh, this has been found just by chance by a mine otherwise this case has no access to the surface so it it was a discovery and who knows how many of these cavities exist just below our feet other <clears throat> just to give an estimation of uh, how how big is this underground world uh, we have just an idea now, uh, there is still a lot to, to understand, but we know that about 40,000 kilometers of caves have been explored in the world. And uh, we know more or less the mean density of uh, caves in, in a karst region, as you see the violet uh, area in the continents, which is about 20% of the continent. And um, it, it, using these two Two factors: what we know and what uh, what we know about Cassic region, we can calculate that probably at least ten millions of kilometers of passages exist uh, on our continents on Earth. So uh, we have explored really a very very small per percentage of, of this incredible uh, subsurface world. And this is just uh, talking about classical karst caves, so those which are in uh, in limestone for example but uh, we know that uh, caves exist in every lithology it just depends on the condition and on, on geologic times so uh caves have, be, have been explored in even in quartz rich lithologies so very hard very ancient rains like in venezuela and the tepui uh, mountains of venezuela and these are probably the oldest caves that can be explored on earth and uh, also caves exist in volcanic regions and they form through completely different processes, which are due to the magma uh, flowing in uh, lava flows, for example, or due to um, magma chambers, which are evacuated uh, during the eruptions, and so we can uh, we can explore them afterwards. So <clears throat> even this uh, this uh, this field is really really interesting and new, and we have still a lot to explore in different volcanic islands, for example, in Hawaii, in Canary Island, in Iceland, uh, and uh, and in Galapagos, for example, in Galap Galap Galapagos Archipelago. Uh, another type of caves which are very important are gl glacier caves. So uh, all the uh, glaciers around the world now are experiencing uh, accelerated melting and uh, the water uh, just uh, entered the, 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 the ice, entered the, the surface of these glaciers and bring a lot of heat uh, within the glacier themselves and create gigantic caverns like the one explored in Greenland, for example. And these caves are, are an indication of what is going on due to, to, to global warming. 
and it, it's very interesting to explore them and th there is still really a lot to know also about this kind of uh, environment so uh one of the most important questions for 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 speleologists and for scientists is not just uh, um, how much we can explore but it's uh, what we can find down there uh, because uh, a cave can form through millions of years or uh, hundred thousands of years and then they can remain a kind of a stable condition while on the surface a lot of things are happening uh, and weathering is changing the landscape on the surface of our main mountain regions for example but in a cave everything which is trapped inside uh, can really uh, stay preserved for for millions of years so we have of course uh, paleontological remains this is uh, very very peculiar type of minerals uh, we have uh, formation like speleothems the stalagmites and the stalactites that uh, record paleoclimate we have life we have life that has been evolving uh, to live and to adapt to live in the underground and all of these of these elements that we can read in a cave are really important to understand the evolution of our, of our planet the geological evolution but also the climatic evolution and the uh, evolution of life so here I will give to you just very few examples. One of the most important uh, breakthrough in, in the last 30 years in cave science has been this, the study of speleothems, which has started about uh, 30 years ago, but now is really used all around the world to study the climate of the past. And uh, it's just like working as, uh, as uh, we do with uh, with ice cores, so we can really uh, study every single layer of calcite in these uh, in these uh, formations, and study the oxygen isotopes, and study so the evolution of uh, the atmosphere and the water coming from the at atmosphere through time. We can date them, and uh, we can go farther beyond uh, what we know from uh, from. Uh, the ice core. So you, what you see here is the, the curve of uh, oxygen isotope, isotopes and so temperature, basically, uh, for uh, ice cores in uh, in, uh, in Greenland and uh, for uh, speed attempts in a cave like Devil's Hole, one of the most famous caves in the world for studying paleoclimate, which is in Nevada. So this is really a field, an incredible field, and uh, we have been studying speleothems from different parts of the world. Uh, it's it's now the, the speleothem science called. Uh, they they are fantastic records and new technologies now. For example, using the uranium lead radiochronology is going uh, to extend the range of uh, dating and to, to using these these proxies to millions of years. And this is an example in uh, in Nullarbor Desert in Australia. There are a lot of cave caverns below, just a desert, and these caverns are filled by speleothems that, of course, uh, indicate the presence of water in the past. And so we can really study uh, how the climate was changing in this area of Australia uh, since the, the last uh, uh, seven, eight millions of years, which is far beyond any ice core that we could find in Antarctica or in Greenland. Another very important uh, science which is rising is uh, the, the life uh, in cave science. So, um, so studying the evolution of life in caves, both from the point of view of uh, invertebrate, but mainly for bacteria and microorganisms. So here you see some gigantic stromatolites in uh, in a cave in uh, in Venezuela. These are silica stromatolites living. Uh, without uh, any source of light and uh, and uh, and growing with bacteria growing in the cave and fixing minerals, so it's really interesting to study this this kind of life because uh, uh, we we can learn on how life adapts to new environments and use different sources of energy, and uh, and these caves are really time traps and niches for very specialized forms of life. So here you see, for example, these are uh, uh, bacteria which are fixing silica in, in caves in, in, in Venezuela, which is really interesting because silica is uh, a not very reactive mineral. And uh, why these bacteria use silica is really, really intriguing. It's one of my field of research. Another, of course, extremely important uh, cave uh, science field is studying the human journey. 
because most of the ancient remains of, of human beings have been found in caves. So now with the new technologies like DNA uh, extraction, ancient DNA, we can really go farther beyond of what we could find on the surface of, of Earth. And of course, also art. I mean, all the 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 old the most ancient forms of art on on Earth uh, has been found uh, in caves, uh, and uh, and they have been preserved in a perfect uh, state since uh, uh, thousands and thousands of years, and really uh, are a witness of how human has been living and and also the belief the religion of human have been changing and evolving through time so caves are really like temples where we can find uh, our history uh, the history of life in general but then also our history as human being so we uh, i wanted to 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 go toward the conclusion of my my presentation saying that the 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 evolution of of this life uh, on Earth, we know that uh, we live on the surface as human being, but uh, of course uh, uh, our planet is much bigger, and uh, what lies below our feet is 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 very complex, and we know do not know very much. But it's very interesting also to look to other planets because uh, if caves exist on on Earth, for sure they uh, exist also on other planets like like Mars, for example, like the Moon. And we have different kind of, kind of caves. We know that we have uh, volcanic uh, caves like lava tubes uh, on the moon uh, because we have volcanic region on Mars and so on, but also glacial caves probably on Mars because we have ice cap. And uh, see here, just, just some examples. On, on the moon, we have more than 200 pits that have been uh, identified, uh, which are probably entrances to gigantic caverns. And uh, and future mission could really enter these uh, these cavities and uh, and explore and learn about the history of the moon, which has been preserved below the surface. The same applies for Mars. Mars is really interesting. We are searching life on the surface of Mars, but we know that Mars uh, uh, in this moment the, the condition of the surface are not favorable for life because of cosmic radiation. But this, of course, could change if we look to the subsurface of this planet. So uh, it's really promising. We have now, we know more than 1,000 entrances uh, on, on the surface of Mars, of case. And, and why not? We expect that also on Mars, we, we could have really, really important caves uh, uh, to explore and that they could preserve uh, a lot, uh, a lot of uh, really interesting information. And why not? If life ever ex exists on Mars, they, they, we could find it uh, just there. So uh, my my message is: think about uh, that uh, we are living beings that that live on the surface. But uh, of course, this could be just an exception if we could look toward other other planetary systems. And we need to learn from caves uh, here on Earth uh, to really um, go beyond and uh, and protect also what we have here because. Uh, Everything that we do not really know, uh, which is hiding uh, below our feet, uh, could be in damage if we do not really consider that it, it exists and it's really important for, for uh, preserving the history of uh, our planet, but also to learn about life. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Francesco. That was really, really something. And I, I'm a caver. I'm not in your league, but I'm a very keen caver. And I'm a keen cave diver. I've done quite a bit of cave diving. So I really get the, the thing about this is completely unseen. We're, we live on approximately a third of the planet's surface. Yes. And we look at the ocean, as we say, as just something out there that, you know, is beyond us and particularly underground. And a lot of people are frightened about going underground. They're frightened of the, the dark yes. places. You know. So I was wondering in your astronaut training, uh, and for those of you who don't know, Francesco uh, leads uh, uh, space agency teams that uh, need to develop astronauts, you know, exploration, a sense of training in difficult and hostile environments. So can you tell us about that, Francesco? It's, it's an interesting part of your work. 
Yes, it's very interesting. I, I at the beginning I, I was uh, I mean I was just a speleologist and then I was involved in astronaut training was really crazy, and uh, and um, because uh, I was I was not thinking at the beginning there was really a connection, but actually there is because if you go to explore a cave, you are really entering an alien world, and everything that you see sometimes is new even for science. Uh, the environment is very difficult. You you get very far from the surface and. Uh, and you you have to be autonomous you have to work as a team and this is something something very similar to what the astronaut will will find when they will go on the moon and on the mars and beyond so we can really learn a lot uh, mutually uh, between uh, space explorers uh, cave explorers for sure o o ocean explorers because of so diving is a very important part of astronaut training and, and the very nice things that I've found is that uh, it's uh, equally important to know uh, this environment and to protect them uh, to, to really go farther and beyond. So the astronauts really like this training. We go in a cave for six days. We explore really with them. We do science. We, they have to, to really research in these caves. And uh, we have trained 34 astronauts from seven different space agencies. And so it's really a, a really nice program. And, uh, you know, we as a cavers, we are used to, to work in the dark. In these caves, uh, we have been uh, involved in something that is looking to the stars. So it's, it was really, really strange and, and fantastic for me. I think that's absolutely great, Francesco. And as well as all the work about extremophiles, you know, life at the edges and the obvious transference of extremophiles on Earth to extremophiles on Yes. Mars and all the rest of it. Even though I'm not a caver in your league, but I have to say I do love it, and I have a dream of caving with you one day. Is that we have to go? Yeah. Is that every caving trip really does feel like a true adventure, doesn't it? Do you still get that? Does it yes. still feel like an adventure? Yes, of course, of course. Every every expedition uh, to caves is really an adventure. But even the one here, very close to my to my home. You do not, if, when you explore a case, uh, you do not need to really to go to Galapagos or to Venezuela in the middle of the Amazon to really feel the adventure of exploration. Because even in the mountains here, I live in the mountains in the north of Italy, here close to my home, I have many caves that have, have not been completely explored. So it's just I, I just walk on my backyard and, and they find something new, a new entrance, and, and then the adventure starts. I think that it is the easiest uh, really way to do exploration now and uh, and it's real exploration because nobody has been there we do not know everything sometime and you can get really far even if you are not so so in a remote area of our planet then of course if we go farther i've been to greenland uh, exploring ice caves i've been to to many places in the world and it's it's always fantastic and the emotion to see something that even um, I mean, reality always overcomes imagination when you explore a cave. It's always beyond what you can think and, and expect. Fantastic, Francesco. Well, let's do that. What, one day, yeah. I'll come you and have explore these beautiful caves in, yeah. in Italy. And, and you, I'm in Switzerland at the moment, but when you come to England, and we'll, we'll have a good old thrash around those muddy Yorkshire caves. Why not? We, we, I, I've never been to Yorkshire, so I want to go. Well, it's a fa fantastic caving, really, really fantastic yeah, yeah. caving. Okay, it's a deal. Thank you, my yes, friend. Yes, it's a deal. Keep Thank up you. The great work. Bye. Thank